production provided by... At Marshall's, our buyers hustle every day to get you great deals on all the good stuff. Like this stuff. And that stuff. And ooh, that's some really good stuff. We get the deals, you get the good stuff. Marshall's. If you've had thyroid eye disease for years, and the pain in the back of your eye is forcing bad words from your mouth, it's not too late for another treatment option. To learn more, visit TreatTed.com. That's TreatTed.com. Coming up tomorrow, Spilling the E.T. Father's Day edition. New kid on the block, Joey McIntyre, gets grilled by his two sons. That is what's happening now. More street takeovers over the weekend here in San Antonio, leading to multiple arrests. Coming up, the message from San Antonio police. Even hotter temperatures are on the way, combining with the humidity. So we're going to talk about higher heat index values and some cooler air is surprisingly close. I'll give you a comparison in just a bit. And like just about everything these days, car insurance rates are going up. Coming up, some of the ways that you can save some money. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at five, three people under arrest for a street takeover that happened over the weekend. Yeah, it's a problem we've seen across our city over the past several months. As our Lee Waldman reports, San Antonio police say the burnouts and the donut donuts will likely continue during the summer months. A lot of times these happen on the weekends, but um, the, you know the saying idle hands is the devil's playground. That playground, three separate locations on Southwest Loop 410 and I-35 late Saturday night for street takeovers. San Antonio police officers arrested three people, 22-year-old Pedro Mora Jr., 22-year-old Degoberto Ibarra Vega, and 30-year-old Jose Arturo Contreras Serrato, facing reckless driving charges. Mora Jr. is also facing a weapons charge for unlawfully carrying two handguns that officers seized. San Antonio police say in total, the street takeover resulted in four misdemeanors, three vehicles impounded, two firearms seized, and two traffic citations. Well, anytime there's kind of e illegal activity, uh, there's going to be also uh, weapons that are involved and things can escalate quickly. People can get hurt. Uh, our, our main priority is to ensure public safety. These, these laws are on the books for a reason. Street takeovers are not a new problem here. In January, a video went viral of a street takeover on I-10 in Callahan. A driver began shooting and caused a four vehicle crash. The next month, SAPD helped tip off the Austin Police Department ahead of a large scale takeover there where an officer was hurt and several patrol cars were damaged. Sergeant Moscoso says they work with police departments in other areas outside of San Antonio to help keep the street takeover problem in check and to keep the public safe. Our fusion center is the, for the South Texas, so we cover a, a wide area of, of South Texas. And like I said, we, we monitor social media and open source data that, that uh, we can see something that's happening, not necessarily in San Antonio, and then we just warn, hey, this might be happening, you might want to check out this area. On Friday, Governor Greg Abbott signed Texas House Bill 40... 1442 into law. It deals with the prosecution and seizure of items related to reckless driving. We'll have more on how that helps law enforcement in the district attorney's office in our area to crack down on street takeovers. That's tonight on the Night Beat. Reporting live, Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Lee. We have new updates on the investigation into two women found dead over the weekend. San Antonio police confirming at least one of those deaths now being considered a homicide. Police say 68 year old Doris Campos is behind bars charged with the murder of her sister, 64 year old Patricia Saceda. According to an affidavit, another woman, 72 year old Linda Bland, also found dead in that home. The affidavit says Bland's daughter went to her mother's home. Campos was yelling to her, quote, She's on the floor, end quote. Bland found her mother, along with Saceda, dead on that floor. The affidavit says Campos admitted to shooting and killing Saceda. It's believed the two were killed a couple of days before their bodies were found. Actually, they died a couple of days before their bodies were found, I should say. At this time, no foul play is suspected in one of the women's death, but her cause of death has not yet been released. Shots fired at officers for nearly 30 minutes, and now we've learned the name of the man killed in that shooting that brought officers to that apartment in the first place. The Bear County Medical Examiner said the victim was 61-year-old Gregory Visman. 
Police were called out to an apartment on Raybon Drive Friday morning after the suspect called someone and confessed to killing his roommate. That person called police. When officers got there, SAPD says that suspect fired shots at officers for nearly 30 minutes. No officer was hit. Once police eventually got inside the apartment, they found the bodies of Visman and the suspect, who they say took his own life. It was quite the fiery sight. Now Pennsylvania's governor signed a disaster declaration following the interstate collapse from Philadelphia over the weekend. I-95 in Philadelphia, to be exact, collapsed following a massive fire yesterday. There you see it. According to authorities, a tanker truck hauling hundreds of gallons of gasoline crashed while navigating a curve on I-95. That truck landed on its side, rupturing the tank and causing that massive fire. State officials say demolition of the destroyed section of I-95 will happen in the coming days. Rebuilding the highway will begin soon after. Repairs expected to take several months. The impact will be felt up and down the entire East Coast. This is not just about uh, commutes. This is also about supply chains, about 150,000 vehicles a day. We're still waiting for an official update on the driver of that tanker truck. We know the vehicle, there was a vehicle found buried under the rubble. Initially, authorities said that driver was unaccounted for. Today marks seven years since a gunman walked into an Orlando nightclub and opened fire. 49 people were killed on Latin night at the Pulse, a popular gay club there. Orlando's mayor honoring the lives lost on social media by vowing to continue support for the survivors and victims' families. Investigations now underway in Maryland right now after three people are killed, three others injured in a shooting over the weekend. Police characterizing it as a dispute and saying the shooting was not random, but a motive for plane remains unclear. The ages of those shot range from the 20s to early 50s. Conditions for the injured victims have not been released at this time. Police do have a person of interest in custody. In just under 24 hours, former President Donald Trump is scheduled to appear in a federal courtroom in Miami to be arraigned. Security already on high alert outside of that courthouse ahead of this court date. The indictment details the locations where Trump is accused of storing classified documents at his Mar-a-Lago estate in Florida. Former National Security Advisor John Bolton believes the former president is downplaying the repercussions of the indictment very narrowly tailored. They didn't throw everything up against the wall to see what would stick. Uh, this really is a rifle shot, and I, I think it's, uh, it should be uh, the end of Donald Trump's political career. Trump faces a total of 37 counts in a federal indictment related to his handling of those classified documents after leaving office. All right, take a look at this. You may just think it's a regular picture of Wonder Woman. Actually, that doesn't look anything. There we go. That is a regular picture of Wonder Woman. It isn't. Instead, it's nearly 12,000 screws all placed together. In order for, for it to work, I, I have to spend a lot of time on a concept first and then translate that dots into screws. Darren Timby is from England, and he's been doing art like this for a few years now. The inspiration for art made by screws came from his experience in graphic design. He says... He saw each screw as a pixel, and the more you zoom out on pixels, the better you can see the picture. Timby's done screw art of famous singers. There you see the queen, actors. While visiting a friend here in San Antonio, he asked her what she would want, and her answer was Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is a mindset about um, being confident and being your own superhero. Timby's art has become so big in the UK that some of his pieces are now in the Hard Rock Cafe in London. That is a gift to be able to see something like that and make art out of it. Oh, yeah. All right, let's take a look. I-10 at Frio here. You can see traffic slow going as it heads into downtown, as it usually is this time of day. Head heading out of town looks just fine. A no real traffic tie-ups to tell you about just that 5 o'clock commute. And the AC is cranking in the vehicles, that's for sure. 97 are high temperatures so far today. That's five degrees above average, but the record 105 set on this day. Eagle Pass right now, 98. Del Rio and Warren's backyard, 95, 98. Floresville and Shirts. Hannah Maria following suit. Myco 96, New Braunfels, 
97, but it's very muggy outside. So it's that humidity that's adding that little extra kick to the heat. The feels like temperature heat index right now at the airport 106. When you factor in that high humidity that we have and even Hondo a heat index at 106, it's even higher in other locations. We'll take a look at that in a moment and talk about how the temperatures are going to be changing the rest of this week. But this evening it's sticking around 93 at 8 o'clock by 10 o'clock. We're down to 87. More on that heat and you'll be surprised to see where some noticeably cooler temperatures are not that far from us. We'll take a look at it in a bit. Thank you, Adam, from high temperatures to high prices. The cost of car insurance in high gear. Premiums have been rising faster than inflation. We're talking $2,000 a year on average, according to some studies. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz has some ways to bring down those bills. Dennis Osorio gets revved up about cars. So I got four vehicles right now. But all that horsepower means more money to insure them. He chose Progressive. The service is great. If you get homeowner's insurance with the same company, you get discount. Consumer Report says there are ways to lower your bill even more. First, raise your deductible and cancel coverage you just don't need. Changing a $1,000 deductible to $500 can reduce your premium by more than 10%. If your car is older, consider canceling collision and comprehensive altogether because you could end up paying more in repair costs than you would get back. If your car's current value is low, they say you probably don't need to pay for those extra coverages. Next, consider track Programs like State Farm's Drive Safe and Save Connected Car and Progressive's Snapshot use technology to track your driving habits. Many drivers will get a discount right out of the gate, but keep in mind. You're looking at a privacy trade-off, so if you're willing to give up some of these details about where you're going and how you're driving, how often you're driving, then you might see some benefit. But if you don't want the insurer riding shotgun with you, then you might say no to some of these programs. Osorio says he's open to it. We're pretty safe drivers, so anything that saves money is, is always a plus. Finally, if it's been a while, it can pay to shop around and compare rates. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Hey, coming up as we continue to warm up, we want you to be mindful of your safety while you're outside. We're breaking down the differences between heat stroke and heat exhaustion in a few minutes. But first, how the man accused of murdering the Cash App founder could have ties to another stabbing case. Here's a look at some of the news we have coming up in our six o'clock hour today. Governor Greg Abbott announcing his plan to deploy a chain of four foot high orange buoys that'll run along the middle of the Rio Grande in an effort to keep migrants from crossing into the U.S. Our Jonathan Cotto talks to a nonprofit organization and law enforcement officials to learn whether these huge buoys will actually be a barrier along the southern border. San Antonio City elections finally been decided after two runoff races this weekend. So what happens to the money that candidates raise during a campaign once a race is over? In a new case that explains the rules when it comes to campaign contributions. A bill headed to Governor Greg Abbott's desk mandates armed security officers at every school in the state. At six o'clock, we're going to break down the lengthy bill and explain what parts have opponents frustrated and worried. All that and more on the news at six. But here at five, we have new details regarding the man accused of stabbing cash app founder Bob Lee to, get to death. The San Francisco Chronicle says this man, Nima Momeni, was investigated for the stabbings of two teenagers in 2005. The report indicates the incident may have been related to a dispute over drugs. The altercation might have started when the 16 year old attacked Momeni. Police reports indicate Momeni was considered potentially both a victim and a suspect in that case. He was never charged, though. Well, many has pleaded not guilty to the April 4th killing of Lee. Well, in case you missed the runoff election results from this past Saturday, Districts 1 and 7 in San Antonio have new representation. In the District 1 race, Sue Kaur easily defeated incumbent Mario Bravo. She had about a 20% lead over Bravo most of the evening. Kaur said that she is ready to hit the ground running in her district. At her victory party, she told us she wants people to know that who they elected is who they're going to get. And one of the first issues she plans to address is infrastructure. 
In the District 7 race, Marina Alderete Gavito actually cruised to victory over Dan Rossiter. She maintained a healthy 25% lead throughout the night. She will replace Anna Sandoval, who resigned from City Council in January for personal reasons. Gavito said she is ready to get to work for her constituents. After her victory, she said she wants to focus on accountability and transparency, and she wants city government to work for the residents. Firefighters, meanwhile, sending stern safety warnings as we get into triple digit temperatures this week. They want you to know the difference between heat stroke and heat exhaustion. When temperatures rise, so do the number of heat related calls that EMS receives. Things like dizziness, sweating, nausea, weakness. They indicate heat exhaustion. If that happens, head to the shade, cool off by drinking some water and remove heavy clothing. Signs of heat stroke include confusion and unconsciousness. If you or someone you know is experiencing those symptoms, that's much more serious. Call 911 immediately. It is a warm one, a humid one out there today, and it kind of feels like, Adam, we might just be getting started in terms of the temperatures climbing. Yeah, we're just getting it ramped up. It's just the beginning right now. But remember, by this time last year, we had already tallied up about a half a dozen 100 degree days. And so far, the warmest we've been this year is 98. Let's get right to our temperature trend for the days ahead. Tomorrow up to 99, Wednesday 100. We're forecasting our first triple digit day so far this year for the middle part of the week. And then we get on into Thursday, Friday and a little above 100, even up to 103 by Friday. But keep in mind, when you factor in the mugginess, it's going to feel like it's up to 107. That's during the hottest part of the day, especially in the afternoon. Now, here's the key. Our dew points, they're well into the 70s because of all that soil moisture. So we've got that really high humidity as a result of all the rainfall that we had in weeks and even months past. Dew points in the 70s. So when you factor in the humidity, Combined with the temperature, it feels like we're up to 114 in Catula. Laredo feels like 116 right now. Even Pleasanton feeling like 106. Actual air temperatures mostly in the mid 90s, one exception. Catula right now, high temperature or current temperature of 106. Del Rio at 97 and Kerrville currently at 92. This is interesting though. Let's go further to the north. Check out Lubbock. 74, Amarillo, 68, Abilene, 79, the current temperature. Cooler air not that far away, and that's because of this frontal boundary across North Texas. North of that boundary, we got the cooler temperatures. South of that boundary, we've got the thick heat and even the humidity, that mugginess that we're feeling. But that's also where they have rain. You go farther to the north, and along that boundary, that's where we've got some showers and thunderstorms, and even the potential for some severe storms up there, particularly eastern New Mexico and up the front range of the Rockies. But none of that will be headed our way. Actually, we've got the Big Blue H, the heat high, too close to us to allow any of that rain to make it our way. In turn, this heat high really just takes over and it sits right on top of us, centered over South Texas. So parts of North Texas could still get some showers in the days ahead. But for us, it's just the heat high pressing down on us and giving us the increase in our temperatures as the week progresses. And we talked earlier up to 103 by Friday time frame. And in turn, look at our rain chances at 0% every day. Again, all of the rain activity will be far to the north of us, but at least some parts of Texas that are drought stricken, including the Panhandle, can still get some rain. They're just far enough away from the center of that heat high. So let's break down the day tomorrow. Starting off with the clouds early, those low clouds to start the day, 76 degrees at 7 a.m. and then sunny by noon, we're at 88. 2 o'clock, already 96, then a high temperature tomorrow afternoon. 4 o'clock will hit 99 degrees. But when you factor in that humidity, it could feel like it's up to 106 for a few hours tomorrow afternoon. Even higher feels like temperatures farther south of town, which is what we're seeing today. Tomorrow afternoon, air temperature in Del Rio up to about 105. Uh, Catula could make it up to 104, 97 Gonzales. Locally, mostly upper 90s, even Holotus at 96, Leon Springs 97 and Lavernia 
topping out right at 100 degrees. And we talked about that temperature trend. Nothing but sunshine in the days ahead with that heat. And notice some record challenging heat as we get into Friday. Coming up at 6, we're going to talk about our soil moisture, what it means for our humidity, and when we're going to lose some of that moisture coming up at 6. We're off and running this summer. <laughs> yeah, what it look looks at that like. forecast. Thanks, Adam. All right, so he hasn't even officially joined the Spurs, but he could <laughs> win a championship before he even signs with the silver and black. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, though, Wimby and his team did not play very good in game one right. of the French finals. They played much better today in game two, and Wimby certainly had a better game. Did that mean a victory for the Mets? 92 plus the Denver Nuggets. You know what? They're going to try to win it all tonight in the NBA coming up. Victor Wimbanyama and the Metropolitans 92 played much better today in game two of the LNB Pro A finals, but they still lost the top seeded Monaco 88 to 95 and now trail the best of five game series, two games to none. After scoring just eight points in the first game and losing by 23, Wimby had 19 points, seven rebounds, and four assists today, but it still wasn't enough to get the dub. Game three is on Thursday. The Denver Nuggets will look to close out the Miami Heat tonight in game five of the NBA finals. Denver leads three games to one and is closing in on its first NBA championship. If they do win, the Nuggets and Spurs would be the only former ABA teams to win the NBA Finals. Miami will not go down quietly. Of course, the Heat have won seven road games during the postseason, and they are 2-0 when they faced elimination. We know what each other is capable of, uh, so we didn't come this far to, to stop playing now, no matter what the odds are, the analytics. When we get out there, we just got to compete. We got to win one, and then we got to win another one, and then... Um, we gotta win another one. You no, know, to be here just kinda rounds it out and uh you know shows that when we're given the right uh circumstances and everybody healthy, you know, God willing, um, that we can do it. You know, I think when we're playing our best basketball we're a very hard team to stop. And uh I just see us playing like that f for the majority of the time. It's the Miami Heat at the Denver Nuggets, 7.30 tonight from Ball Arena in a Denver live right here on Case at twelve and Denver is favored by eight and a half points. In case you missed it this weekend, Providence High School basketball player Callista Bird Martin committed to Texas Tech. The four-star recruit is seen here with her parents, Frankie and Eddie Martin, Texas Tech head coach Krista Gerlich, assistant coaches, and some of her new teammates. Martin is a combo guard and averaged 24.7 points and 14.6 rebounds last season as a junior. She's going to take summer school so she can graduate early in December this year and start at Tech in January 2024. And Martin also made the class of 2024 Hoop Girls recruit rankings per ESPN Women 100. Number 27 is Ariana Robertson from the Clark Cougars. She's undecided. 44 is Ryan Forcier from Brandeis High School who committed to Southern Cal and Bird Martin comes in 91st in the country. We have a lot of talented basketball players. Mm -hmm. here, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that was quite a uh, commitment video. That was. It was awesome. One of the better yeah. ones I think I've seen. Yeah. Nice. Thanks, Larry. Yep. We'll be right back. That is all our time here at the, on the News at 5. Thanks so much for watching. World News is up next. We'll see you right back here at 6 o'clock.